So the goal of the randomized control trial is to determine or to test the efficacy of a treatment or an intervention. And the way you do this is you'll intervene in one population and you'll compare that intervention to the outcome in another population that didn't have the intervention. So let's look at an example to make this a little clearer. So let's say we start with 100 people, and I'll just denote this by this stick figure right here on the top left. And I've already drawn in the population here. And let's say that each of these different colored people represents 10 individuals. So we have a diverse slice of the population. And the idea is we're going to break these into two groups. And let's say this first group here is going to get a drug, which we'll call drug A. And the second group here isn't going to get a drug. And this population of 100 is going to be divided into two groups of 50, which I've drawn in here. And ideally, it's going to be divided so that each population has a similar population breakdown. So there's an equal number of similar individuals with similar characteristics in each population. And this is going to be done by the experimenter. So I've drawn in here this guy in a white coat symbolizing the experimenter. So since these populations are similar to one another, we can then compare drug A versus no drug. So I'll just write in the word compare. And we can tell which drug is better, drug A or no drug. And that's going to lead us to our conclusion. So we might be able to say that in this case, drug A works better than no drug in, say, lessening whatever treatment you're looking at here. So we'll just say A works out better in this case. So there's a couple of parameters of randomized control trials that we just want to get down on the right half of the page here just to uh, make sure we got them down. And the first one of these is randomization. And we said in our last video that randomization was the experimenter deciding which drug population individuals are going to fall into, in this case drug A or no drug. And we know that's assigned by the experimenter, this guy in the white coat here, so I'll just write EXP next to him to make sure we know that he's the experimenter. So the next parameter of RCTs we're going to look at is that of blinding. So blinding is uh, extremely important in randomized control trials, and it basically means that people who are in the study, and sometimes even the experimenters themselves, don't know which drug population a specific individual might fall into. And this is to prevent uh, different biases from entering the study. So to symbolize this, I'll just draw a little blindfold here on the experimenter to symbolize that he's being blindfolded. So we'll just draw in his yellow blindfold. And, but remember this applies to not only the experimenter but to the people in the study themselves. So the third characteristic of RCTs we're going to talk about is intention to treat. So I'll just get that down over here. Intention to treat. So intention to treat is taking into account the people who drop out of a study just because they move or there's lost a follow-up. So I'll just X out a couple of these people in each drug population with purple X's. And intention to treat means that when you're doing your final comparison and making your final conclusion, you ignore the fact that they dropped out. And you consider them in your statistics as if they had been there the entire time. And even though you'd think that would lessen the impact of the drug or the no drug, depending on which population they came from, you'd be right. But the idea is that you keep them in the numbers because it reflects the actual real tendency of a population to take the drug. So if the drug is only 40% effective when it's taken completely perfectly, but 30% effective because some people drop out, then you'd want to know the drug is only 30% effective in the real world where you don't really expect everyone to take all of their medication perfectly 100% of the time. The last characteristic of RCTs is that of being ethical. And you can imagine that when you're giving people different drugs that may or may not have been tested on humans before, it's extremely important that you do your due diligence and make sure that, to your knowledge, this isn't going to cause some irreparable, terrible side effects to these individuals and cause some real harm and do some real damage. So that's why that all of these RCTs have to be approved and vetted before they can move forward and actually give these people drugs to hopefully find out if they can be treated in a new and more effective way. The last thing to say about RCTs is just to go back to the characteristics we talked about in our first videos. So we know these are experimental studies because the experimenter decides which group an individual is going to fall into. We know this is going to have forward directionality because their exposure is going to be known before the outcome. 
And we know it's going to be a prospective study or have prospective timing because the study is going to start before the outcome is determined.